Good morning, everyone. So I am connecting with you earlier in the day than normal. Um, I am up and ready to go. I'm not sure I love my hair, but it might have to just do because um, I wanted to get this done before I got involved in other things. Hi there. How are you guys? Hey, Chris. Hi, Kathleen. Um, everybody's joining quickly today. So um, I'll give it a couple more seconds here for a few more people to hop on. So uh, we've been talking about metamorism. Hey, um, how are you guys? Color Confident Home has joined. That is somebody in my Camp Chroma group and I can't remember who that is. You guys all have color in your <laughs> in your business name, so it's hard for me to keep them straight. It'll come to me here in a second. Um, so we were talking about metamorism, and I said that metamorism always involves two colors. And the question that I got was, well, what do you mean by metamorism uh, when you put color on a ceiling and the flop angle changes how it appears? Well, that is in relationship to the to the wall color right? Cheryl, <laughs> Cheryl at Color Confident Home. Thank you. Um, it would have popped in my brain here eventually. So it, those are the two colors. It's the wall color and it's the um, ceiling color. And so it might appear that your ceiling color works really well with your wall color when you are comparing the chips. I don't know. Let me get some kind of sample here. Um, you know, hey, you love true white with wedding band, for example. These are Kills colors. I like working with these chips. I don't specify these colors a whole lot, but I find myself playing with them often. There's some really good colors in here, but it's the Kills brand, you know? It's like people don't, it's not a mainstream brand. People don't talk about it a lot. It's a jo Joanna Gaines collection that I don't, that doesn't even seem to help a whole lot. But anyway, it's really pretty colors. And um, I have these sitting on my desk most of the time just because I use them for examples because they're nice and big. But, you know, I was talking about, mm, hey, I love what, uh, true white with wedding band. And then you get it on the ceiling and then all of a sudden the color appearance of true white changes in relationship to wedding band. And that's because of the flop angle. It's called geometric metamorism. Susan at Color Envy helped me remember that term because I just call it flop angle, right? So it's always two colors when you're talking about metamorism. And the pronunciation is metamorism. It's not metamorism. And um, yeah, some people ask me about that too. So Continuing on with our conversation about metamorism, and I told you that we can check for that in the Spectro app, Spectro One Pro in this particular case, because that's what I'm using, or the Spectro One, which is right here, right? It's two devices, two spectrophotometers from um, variable. I need to get my nails done too. That's off the agenda, along with a million other things. So, in the Spectro app from Variable, there is a metamorism window. And the example I'm gonna show you today is this tile, it's called Madre Parola. And I like this uh, selection because it's very similar to Taj Mahal, but I think it's prettier. I think it has more movement in it, but it's not too much. Taj Mahal, I don't know, can look a little, it's it's good if it doesn't have a lot of pattern in it so it depends right so it's good to have the madre parola as another option um and so to find the paint colors that go with this countertop right all we have to do is take our spectro in this case i'm using the spectro one pro because it will measure through the gloss it accounts for the gloss and we put it strategically on the tile or on your countertop you want to try to find a bigger spot of color if you spy and pick out one particular area that you think would be ideal for wall color then that's your target and then that's where you place your aperture over you place it over that area that you've chosen from the countertop and again these devices all have their own light source. So the ambient light has no effect on the measurement whatsoever. Hey, Susan from Color Envy Design. I was just talking about you. We're talking about geometric metamorism again. 
and uh, I'm going to show you guys how to use the window with specific products. And again, this is a tile. I measured it. I got, um, I captured the data values in my Spectro app. That's what it looks like. So I measured the tile. I took my data values and I went to the paint color DNA table and I entered the range for lightness, chromaticity, and hue angle. And I looked at the list of colors that popped up on the color DNA table that aligned with the data values directly from the countertop. And I was able to shop pink colors. And there was a wide range of them. Um, exclusive Ivory from Don Edwards, Fisherman's Net from PPG. Uh, my favorite was Sandstone Cliff from the Bear Fan Deck. Um, let's see what else. Uh, there was one from Benjamin Moore that looked really good too, and I forget what that was. But I'm looking here to see if I still have it open, and I don't. But what I settled on was Doric White from Dunn Edwards, right? So you can go shopping for paint colors there that all fit within the same range as your countertop. So you pull the color directly from your target, and then you use those data values to go shop for paint colors on the paint color DNA table. So I ended up with Doric White from Dunn Edwards, and it's that one. You see it? And I'll hold it up here with the tile, and you can see what's going on there. So they're small samples, right? Um, but it doesn't matter because the target for every can of paint is a paint chip. And the accuracy of these paint chips have to meet some of the strictest standards in the entire industry. So you can rely on a paint chip. They aren't ink on paper. They're actually a special kind of lacquer. And like I said, they have to meet some of the strictest standards, color standards in the entire industry. And one of those standards is um, they can't shift. They have to be constant under at least five different light sources and some manufacturers of the color tools and paint chips uh, require seven different light sources. So it depends on who's making the color collateral, but it can be anywhere from, uh, it has to be constant under five to seven light sources, all of the chips, the Fandex, the large chips that you can order. So that is the target for every gallon of paint. So I measured the chip then too, right? So first I measured, first I measured the countertop itself, and then the second line of data values down there is the paint chip, Doric White from Dunn Edwards. And we can see that they're very similar, right? There's a difference of just 0 0.94, and that's a big green circle in the center. And the app is telling you this is a really good color match between Doric White the paint color and Madre Perola the tile. So good that it's only perceivable, a difference is only perceivable by superhumans is what it says in the, in the center. So that's how you find a neutral color to go with your countertop. The next question, point of discussion was, well, that's great. I love how these numbers work and how quick it is and how it can take you directly to a whole list of paint colors to choose from, lighter, darker if you wanted to go. Doesn't have to be this mid-tone neutral. If you wanted something lighter, you could find one from the list. But it's great that the numbers align under this controlled light source that's within the device. But what happens when it's in place, when it's, actu when it's actually installed? Is this tight color match going to hold up under different light sources? And we can answer that question. And it's a different window in the app. This, these, uh, this diagram illustrates the spectral curves of both of the things that I measured, the spectral curve of the tile and the spectral curve of the paint color. And if I flip through one more, this is another diagram <laughs> that really we don't ever use, but um, I go into detail about these in my course, the four pillars. But here's the important window that we're looking for. 
it's this one with the triangles in it and you can see that all of the triangles are green so that's telling me that these colors the paint color is going to match this tile under the five light sources that the app measures for so if there was any kind of metamorism alert or warning telling me that there would be a problem with color appearance and color shift under a light source, these triangles change colors. They go from yellow to orange to red. It's a metamorism alert window. So it will tell you how bad it's gonna be. <laughs> but because they're all green, I can feel confident that I can put dork white on the walls with a Badre Perola kitchen countertop. And no matter what the light source is, artificial or natural throughout the day, the color match, the color harmony is gonna hold true. And we know that <laughs> because we can measure for it. And it's just that simple. Now, if one of these triangles would have shown up as you know yellow or orange, it would depend on which triangle because there are two fluorescent light sources in here too. So the three <laughs> that I pay attention to is A, D50, and D65. A is an incandescent light source. D50 and D65 are daylight light sources. So I don't really pay attention to the, florence, the fluorescent light sources so much, but you know, hey, it's nice to know, right? <laughs> and the rule of thumb is if you have at least three green triangles in this metamorism alert window, odds are your color pairing, your color combination is going to hold true. It's going to hold up under any light source. So there's guidelines that you can use to help you predict how a wall color is going to show up in context. And, um, you can also rely on the functionality of the app to tell you exactly what's going on from a color science and color DNA perspective. And it's really that simple. So you still want to get samples and test in the space, but going through this very quick and simple process, I mean, this took me less than maybe 10 minutes. I probably took a little bit longer <laughs> because, um, there is a big list of colors to choose from and I had trouble choosing which one I wanted to use for the example. So I probably shopped the paint color list a little too long. And that's just because I didn't have a client, right? This was just for an example. If I would have had a client that helps narrow the focus down a little quicker because they're going to have input like, well, this one's gonna to be too dark for her or this one's gonna to be too, too light for her or this one's gonna to be too gray. I need something with more chroma. Do you know what I mean? So um, in this example, it's like all of them <laughs> were options for the example. Having a client actually makes it easier because you have a brief to follow and you have someone, uh, someone's personal color preferences to consider when you're shopping the list. And I didn't have that. So it doesn't take very long at all. So that's it. You measure your uh, target, your countertop, your tile, Whatever it is that you want to measure, you align the color data values using the paint color DNA table to get a list of paint colors that go with your target. And then you shop the list and then you pull that paint chip and you measure it too with the spectro. And then you flip to the metamorism window and you can check it and see if you're going to have a problem or not. And that's it. <laughs> it's just that easy. And I don't have anything else to tell you. So if you guys have any more questions about metamorism, just let me know. Um, a lot of you have the very same questions. So I think I, I, I think I hit all of the questions there in that conversation that I got from the last time I talked to you. So, okay, it's Monday and I am headed out the door. I have a couple paint stores to get to, a couple people to go see, and I am going to go quote an exterior. And I always get this wrong. It's not, it's Cave uh, Cave Creek. I'm headed up to Cave Creek, which is like 
I think north of Scottsdale. It's going to take me over an hour to get there, you guys. So that's why I'm up and out of here early. Okay. You are welcome, you guys. Um, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to drag in my feet because I don't want to get stuck in the traffic headed up north. It's only 630 here. So it's going to be brutal. Traffic in Phoenix is brutal. I don't know about where you guys live, but driving around town is just getting worse. Yeah. All right. I'm going to find a good podcast and I really am going to go this time. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.